Uh, a couple hours later, we're starting the vlog for Tuesday, uh, October 13th, 2020. And I have stuff in my mind to talk about, but most of it's already gone. Uh, the meditation went pretty well. went longer than I expected it to. Uh, the gaming is, is going well. And I watched some cartoons and had a bit of uh, cereal. Uh, some Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> but it's kind of slipped my mind as to what I actually wanted to talk about. The conversation was there earlier, but it's no longer here now. So I think uh, we'll just sort of leave it as this uh, sort of brief introduction. Maybe uh, I'll break this uh, segment up into several other segments. Uh, I see other vloggers do that, so I might do the same thing because uh, right now there's no conversation. Well, around 8 a.m. this morning, I didn't have much of anything to say. The conversation just simply wasn't there. But it is today, it is not well, today, <laughs> it is now around two o'clock, it's in the afternoon. It is here, and the magic word of the day is package opening. Yeah, I got another package from Amazon. I do things in bits and pieces, so it uh, does take some time to get things done. And what I'm working on now is uh, setting up a uh, bathtub. And i got to set up a, the pumping system for the bathtub, bathtub. So, from Amazon. Here we go. There's from Amazon. I got this. Submersible water pump. Let me get it out of that glare there. There we go. Once you get the angle right, you get the glare out of the way, and there you go. Probably one of the phrases is, Bob's your uncle. I don't have an Uncle Bob. comes with mm. <laughs> I drop things. Ugh. it's so hard to get it off afterwards well here it is here okay this looks good this is what I've got. Now let's sort of see uh, what else I can get out of it. There's some attach attachments. The picture said it came with a hose, but it didn't look like much of a hose, but this is it here. Uh, this is it here. I think I'm going to have to buy an extra length of, row, uh, of, of hose. It comes with these attach-on nozzles, uh, like this. Here, uh, put this in now for now. I'll show you. Looks like I'm going to have to order an extra hose to go with this. So now it looks like this. You put the hose on top. You run it out. And uh, now you can, get, you can empty the bathtub out very easily without having the bail. So this is... Uh, 
I'm going to be in the bathtub, not with me, but uh, to end the, uh, to empty out the bathtub, that's where that's going to be. So, but I do have to get an extra length of hose. Because what I have right here is what they give you, what they give you isn't going to work. So, that's, uh, the package opening, that's, uh, what you get. The pictures never tell you exactly what's there in terms of uh, what they have in terms, you know, for uh, the sales aspect of things. When you look at the, what they're offering in terms of the pump itself, they always enlarge it. They, uh, you know, do as much as they can to make you think it's uh, significantly larger than it was. Uh, but as long as it does the job, then who cares? And uh, away we go. So I just got to sort of, there's a manual that tells you a little bit how to use it, but particularly the feature, because a lot of times they have extra buttons on here, they put other features in there, so it's not simply enough to sort of uh, plug it in the way you go, you do have to sort of see whether things set correctly or not, or, or if there's any other uh, complications. And put this back in the box again. the uh, attachments that's necessary and I'll keep the manual out I don't need the hose that came with it you know thank you very much for the hose but uh, it, it's not actually usable so uh, yeah that's about that this <laughs> this is a beam from one of my from one of my mice or my optical mouse and so that's that. That's the uh, uh, the product. All right. I won't. I will. Yeah. I'll. last night. Uh, I just wasn't feeling it in terms of uh, driving. Uh, if you don't feel up to driving, don't drive. Because uh, you need your wits on the road. You roll through the stop sign, making sure there's no tra traffic either way. It's going to be a little tricky at, uh, uh, at Van Horn. The light's there. Going slower than I usually would go. Just because I am still tired tonight. So. Uh. Safety is the most important thing, so you drive with caution, particularly on the smaller streets and stuff like that. You, you know, you go at a lower speed because you've got turns and everything. There's no hurry. And I get home uh, fast enough or from point to point here in this case, uh, that uh, the speed isn't ne ne isn't the necessity. I talked before about uh, your wants and your needs, and uh, the needs which are the necessities have to come first, and then everything else after that, <laughs> the wants. Okay. I'm gonna let the guy go first, go through. Even though the, I had the right of way, the courtesy was the better thing to do. Because then I would be behind him, he'd be behind me, and I'd be going slow. And that often makes the driver anxious, because they want to go faster. 
and that's where your problems start. So, you take a few seconds, didn't really take much time off my time, to do the courtesy, wave the guy through, and uh, then you come in behind and, you know, nobody's anxious. A lot of times, although the narrative in the news is great to talk about racism and so on and so forth, when you sit down and you look at how people behave towards one another, it's not initially an issue of race, it's an issue of uh, individual behavior from one point to the next. A lot of times the people who are racist uh, have, well, that's in terms of their character characteristic, uh, that's one of their flaws, and they're like that to not just particular races, but to everybody. In other words, they have bad manners. And that's, you know, bad manners is a product of bad behavior. Or, you know, <laughs> one could be, one could be linked to the other and, you know, and interchanged. Bad behavior gives you bad manners, bad manners will lead to bad behavior. Oh, so they can, that both both directions are indeed true. And they can be observed. The way you do observation, this is why I started doing observation. I know I was doing physics at the time still anyway. If physics isn't if, if in physics, observation cannot be proven because you're not in control of the situation. The lab the lab view is simply that the lab view that's the control view but it's not the only view Observation is, in many cases, something that should be beyond your control. In other words, in order to be fully objective, you need to remove yourself as much as possible from the situation and not have any influence over the situation. That's pure observation. That's, pure, that's purely objective. It's more necessary in astronomy and physics simply because the objects are so far away you really don't have any control over what you're seeing. So the way to do this and sort of bring it back into if you don't, you don't have uh, the, cu the expenses to b buy a large telescope or pressure, you know, these large observatories, the next best thing is to go to the zoo. You watch the gorillas. Watch how they behave. Watch how. Then you turn around and start watching the people watching the gorillas. That's your. That's your. That's your step in. Because you're simply watching the people. You're not interacting with them necessarily. You're not sort of imposing your views. You're simply watching. And then you can take that from the zoo. Go from the zoo. To the mall, your nearest mall, do the same thing. And that now you're starting to do people watching. People watching is your uh, objective observation, and from there you can start learning learning about be human behavior. You learn about animal behavior, human behavior, and as you get more experience with it, you get to pin, you get to be able to pick up what you can identify what's what. And the factor is, is that as you do this, because it is objective, it's not simply your own opinion. This is something that's observable. But you'll quickly find out that observation in dynamics, particularly in a dynamic situation, is extremely difficult to prove because you'll see behaviors that are so minute sometimes that it's hard to point them out. Uh, a 
could smell from the car the guy was smoking weed. The car that just passed me on the right. Oh, a lot of people are smoking weed now. That's probably why Biden's going to win. <laughs> the number of weed smokers is out number the uh, number of Trump supporters. And the thing is, the Trump supporters aren't necessarily Republican. I have to say Trump supporters rather than Republicans because uh, Trump is more of an independent than anything else. So you can't classify Trump as a Republican choice because the demographics, particularly if you do this by, by Twitter, if you look at the de demographics on Twitter, and that's what I've done, I've done a demographic study on who supports Trump. And he's got a lot of different groups. That he's, he's more of an independent than anything else. And the difference between Trump and Biden is that Biden's been selected by elite groups of uh, Democrats, where uh, Trump has been overwhelmingly elected. So in terms of the election going forward, I would have to say any Democrat or any Republican who supported Biden, who voted for Biden, voted against the United States because they voted for a selection opposed to the election. And that was the choice here. Do you want an election? Cho someone chosen by the people, regardless of whether you like them or not? Or do you want someone who's been selected by, the, by an elite group of people? This is your choice between Biden and Trump. Biden is selected, has been selected, and Trump has been elected. Like him or not, it is not about personality here. And unfortunately, too many people vote by personality. It's about the personal politics. So they'll vote for Biden simply because they hate Trump, not because of any other reason. And that's what's going on in this election now, this back and forth thing, is it's about personal choice in terms of preference. You know, I don't like Trump, so I'm running for Biden. That's, that's the logic. There's no other reason for that. And you talk to them, they have no idea what's going on in the issues. They don't really know what's happened. They haven't done any of the background research. Of course, most of them aren't researchers anyways. Uh, even if they claim to be researchers, some of them are even professors. Uh, but they all have, some, the ones that I know that are professors who have voted for Biden, all have an in. I mean, because they're, they're bread and butter, they're at public universities, and they're getting grant money for doing absolutely nothing. I mean, the one I know, he's doing something called urban design. This is the type of person who sits there and figures out what the perfect city would look like. He doesn't actually have to come up with anything. They're just theories. Well, in many cases, because there's no evidence behind it, it's their hypothesis, it's own thought. And I think if it's your own thought, then why should I, why should someone have to pay you? And they pay professors get a high salary. Why should they have to pay you for something you're thinking about? You know, produce something, okay, well, then, yeah, then, then we'll pay you. But if you're not producing anything, then that's going to be an issue. And it should be an issue. I mean, why should people get, you know, that, this is why I'm an independent scientist. I don't expect people to pay people. I don't expect people to pay me for my thoughts. It's a lot more complex. I have to, you know, dig into my finances and look deeper than uh, the uh, uh, the uh, sort of bought and paid for scientists at the university. Again, they're bought and paid for, and they have to toe the line and do the things that they're expected to do in terms of filing their grants. Basically, I don't. I don't have to follow somebody else's dictate. I set my finances up in a way, in terms of how I bring my money in, so uh, no particular area of research is influenced. So that means I can take my research in any direction I want to go in. So what happens? How do you get back? In, how do you get into politics? Well, it's observational behavior. It's the zoo thing that I was talking about, the zoo, met the zoo methodology, and people watching, people observation. 
Well, that's what politics is. That's what you're observing. You're observing it in real time. But of course, you don't have to play it in real time in terms of being yourself. You can go in uh, as a character. Let's say QAnon. You can choose to become a QAnon. Q is based on uh, GCHQ of James Bond, MI5, MI6. And you can play it like that. And it's a game. It's, it's a live action role. -play. So you can, you can bring the gaming element into it. And of course, this fits, fits very well with uh, uh, Lord's Mobile. Lord's Mobile is a simulation of, of, uh, of live action role play. Doing better tonight than I thought. I was a little tired leaving my parents' place. And I'll get back to my place just in time to handle the necessities of Lord's Mobile. And our discussion time, because of the route we're taking, is going to be a around the 20-minute uh, mark. So it's going to be a longer vlog. I've got six seconds to through this light. There we go. Uh, I just looked at the speedometer very quickly. I'm doing 25 kilometers an hour. But it doesn't matter. This pretty much co uh, constitutes our discussion. This is the conversation. This is the vlog. Well, lucky you. Another unpackaging. Yep. It is 23 hours and 51 minutes into the day of October 13th. Tomorrow is the 14th. Well, in a few minutes, it's the 14th anyways. So let's see what we got. Snip the package open a bit so I can get a good tear. And... It is a package within a package. So let's take care of this. Package within a package. Okay. I can't figure out what it is. I see it now. Not expected. <laughs> this was, or wasn't expected. As a matter of fact, I didn't list it as being post as being in in transit at all. Yet it's here. These are batteries. These are coin batteries that I ordered. There we go. Let's see if we can get a good close up on that. Hold it there for a bit. There you go. I was waiting for these, but the uh, the notice. On uh, the website, uh, AliExpress said not till November, but not November, just less than a week later, here they are. So, yay me and uh, yay for the unpackaging. Well, it is four hours and 15 minutes into the day of October 14th, 2020, and it is time to end another vlog. Yeah. <sighs> the reaction here of yawning occurs every time I start to speak. I'm fine sitting at the TV. Not, don't yawn too much, but uh, fine while I'm not speaking. As soon as I take the first breath, the breath in to speak, there comes the first yawn. Why that physiology exists the way it does, I'm not really too sure. 
anyways, uh, <laughs> one of the things I had been planning to say earlier, earlier, as an opening refrain, is uh, kind of a, uh, I need a vacation from a vacation. A lot of times when you take the day off and you have uh, the family holidays, there is enough sort of excitement going around in, in, in activity that it fills the entire day with that activity. And when you get back, you have enough exhaustion that you need a day to relax afterwards. Uh, and so the Canadian Thanksgiving was certainly like that, that the sort of the Columbus Day. F uh, festivities, which uh, the, the Canadian Thanksgiving is kind of a very bizarre holiday. They're opposed to the racism of Christopher Columbus, but they're all right with the Mayflower, which is what, where you have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving comes from the Mayflower. <laughs> Both Christopher Columbus and the Mayflower before, were, were, existed before Canada existed. The Canadians were the United Empire Loyalists after the American Revolution. Not before. And so what happens is that the, the, the holiday, and again, this is the way it is with most, most university professors who are in this sort of history stuff. They kind of make their own stuff up. <laughs> They'll tell you what culture is uh, as soon as they can figure it out for themselves. Uh, and once they can, can, can uh, figure it out for themselves, they'll try to convince everyone that they're right and everybody else is wrong. And as such, you get the Canadian Thanksgiving, which is on Columbus Day, because they oppose Columbus, but not the Mayflower. You look up your history and sort of see how these things sort of intertwine. Now, what Christopher Columbus did, other than sort of land, not in North America, but he landed... Uh, in uh, Mesoamerica, in, middle, in, the, in, in the Yucatan Peninsula. This is why Spain has control over, has control over much of uh, South America, Mexico, uh, I mean, uh, Florida, and California, where you, where you have the, the, the parts that used to belong to Mexico until the, Amer the American-Spanish War. And we took our, the, all, all the, <laughs> the bits and pieces uh, from the Spanish, you know, just kind of as a, uh, well, there you go type of thing. <laughs> and yet, of course, you know, we have people who are opposed to, uh, have seen this, opposed to uh, Mexicans in California. And so you need to go back to your country, but, well, unfortunately, California is their country. <laughs> We just kind of took it over. Kind of, uh, well, thank you very much, and well, see you, see you later, and uh, goodbye now. <laughs> that was sort of the American perspective of things. And the thing is, what happens is that you try to move to a better position in America. It's kind of hard to do that because uh, both sides have their issues in terms of seeing America through a particular ideal that is not quite settling. And this is coming from an independent. I'm not, I'm not either a Republican nor, nor Democrat. I'm kind of an independent. I see the America, the, the American ideal, not as a local perspective, but as it was an initial perspective. And this is from the Magna Carta, which was, Magna Carta uh, kind of went back to the pre-feudal England before you had the feudal system created by the Catholics. Uh, it was the Battle of Hastings, uh, 1066, that brought that to England. People were much freer, and they had a sense of individuality. And this is sort of what, what, what uh, sort of uh, propagated through the Magna Carta to the American Constitution. So it doesn't matter where you are. America, and American, the American ideal is about individual freedom. So that means you're not going to be telling other people, well, I'm sorry, you're not that American, so you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be doing that because it's about individual, you know, individual freedom. And because you have your individual freedom, you can't stop somebody else from having their individual freedom. The, the sort of the, the binding point here is, is that the laws exist 
so you don't have anarchy. Because anarchy always devolves into uh, tyrannical systems. First, it fall, uh, anarchy doesn't stay by itself. It breaks up into warlords. And then from the warlords uh, into uh, a sort of a tyrannical system. That's, that's what anarchy does. That's what uh, sort of societal chaos does. A collapse of society. You can see this when the uh, when the barbarians invaded Rome. Did they understand how the Roman Empire fell? Fell. Look at the uh, what the barbarians did. And you see the collapse of um, of the Roman Empire. The question is: Are we going to repeat the same mistakes?